Bibles, turn to 2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 12. I thought, my, oh my, this is something I definitely uh, need, but 2 Samuel chapter 12, and everyone needs a Nathan, if you've ever heard that, and uh, God allows Nathan to use a little parable for for David here, but Samuel, Second Samuel chapter uh, 12, and we'll start with verse 1, and the Lord sent Nathan, that's really important, and the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came unto him, and say unto him, there were two men in one city, the, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly uh, many flocks and herds, verse 3, but the poor man had nothing, save one little, is it you, a lamb, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. It did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter and there came a traveler unto the rich man and he spared uh, to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wear excuse me wayfaring man that was come unto him <coughs> but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it up uh, for the man that has come uh, to him now we'll stop right there we'll read a little bit more but uh, what we got here is that we have uh, Nathan, uh, Nathan the Lord, Lord sent him, uh, to talk to David and if you've known the the, the, uh, the story back here uh, David sinned uh, with Bathsheba and then uh, not just that, but also against uh, her husband. And then uh, he marries her. And then in verse 12, God sent Nathan to talk to David. He said, I'm going to give you the story. And then, of course, it was talking about two people. One was rich and one was poor. And, he, and one of them had, you know, all this money in the world that I, he could buy just anything. And uh, many uh, flocks of cattle, you can imagine. But this poor man only could buy one, one lamb. And guess what? Have you ever, have you ever had a, a pet that you treated that pet like a child? Uh, I mean, uh, for example, a dog. Maybe had the dog sleep with you or laid on the couch with you. Just go on. Just treat it like a child, you know. <clears throat> well, that's what this poor man uh, did with this one lamb. And all of a sudden, guess what? Someone comes into town, and the rich man says, mm, I'm going to take the poor man's lamb. I'm going to take the poor man's lamb and give it to the traveler. <clears throat> well, in verse 5, um, And David's anger was greatly kindled against the, the man. And he said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that has done this thing shall surely die. And he Verse 6, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. So David all of a sudden said, I want to do this. You know, paraphrasing, I'm, I'm mad. You know, this person that took this lamb, the rich person took this poor man's lamb. Boy, he, he should just, it's wrong, wrong. Well, all of a sudden, guess what? In verse 7, and, said, and Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. You are that rich man. That's what Nathan yeah. said. You are this rich man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wife into the bosom, in thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given you unto thee such and such things. You know, and it, on this saying that, you know, I gave you, God has given you so much. And yet, if there's more that God could give you, 
uh, his word. Uh, everyone uh, needs a friend like Nathan. Do you know maybe maybe we're going through something and we don't see it. Like David said here, well, in that story, well, uh, then that, that rich man should be punished. And all of a sudden, guess what? Nathan said, well, you're that. You're that rich man. Look what you have done in the chapter 11. You know, look what you have done that caused sin. Uh, sometimes in our Christian's life, in our walk, we need someone uh, to point out things. Maybe we don't see it. I mean, that's why I tell you constantly, make sure you hold me accountable to God's word. Make sure I'm preaching God's word. I mean, if you disagree or you hear, maybe I misquoted something, please tell me. Because I don't want to be saying something. And guess what? It's not God's word. Well, what about you as in your life? Maybe um, somehow, some way that uh, we may be doing something. We might not even know that we're doing something. But yet, have, have a friend. Have a brother in Christ or a sister in Christ that will say, hey, maybe what you're doing, you need to second uh, look at what you're doing or maybe uh, pray about it. I don't think, you know, maybe this path is not not right to go down or maybe you should pray about maybe this other path that you're doing. Uh, I mean, there's, well, that's why it's so important to have a, a closeness with brothers and sisters in Christ to help each other, pray mm -hmm. together, uh, you know, fellowship with one another. Uh, that's why I always say that it's God's family. What, what can I learn from you? And what can you learn from me? Um, how can we work with each other? Am I, you know, if, if something's on your mind, how can we, uh, how can we talk about it and honor God? Because, um, you know, we, we do have struggles. Uh, we do have trials in our lives. And, and it's good to have that someone that, that's there. Uh, God pursues us even when we are less than lovely. Can you imagine Nathan talking to David and he uses stories. I love stories. Why? Because I I can understand them. Now, if you have a math problem, algebra, and the Bible is written in algebra, forget it. I, I couldn't understand it whatsoever. <laughs> a squared plus B squared equals C squared. I really don't understand that because A, B, and C, you can't even add them. That's just me. They're, they're letters. Numbers, yes, I understand numbers. One plus one is two, you know? 100 plus, oh, Philip Dan is five. So I, I don't know what school he went to over there, but. Uh, <laughs> oh, goodness. But really, but uh, even, uh, I, I love the first verse because it says the Lord sent me. Well, if. If the Lord has something on your heart that maybe you need to talk to someone, uh, do it out of love. Well, uh, you know, a lot of people, especially in the world, will say, well, you're judging me or, you know, you're picking on me. No. When you do it out of love and, and like anybody that comes to me and say, hey, I'm just using it as an example. Chewy, what you said about the spirit, I can actually remember uh, when I said uh, uh, Joseph and, and uh, Mary. And I said that they were married. And at the end of the service, uh, someone came to me and said, well, they weren't uh, married. They were actually, uh, they were courting, you know. And I thought, oh, you're right. I said, Melody and I, we just came from a wedding this past weekend, and I had, you know, marriage on my mind. So I said, I apologize. And then guess what? The next, I can't remember if it's Sunday night or, or uh, Wednesday night, I said, I apologize. I am so sorry uh, that I, you know, I said that. But you know what? I wasn't prideful. And let me tell you something. I wanted to correct uh, my mistake. And so I was so glad that someone brought that to my attention. And uh, I don't want to be that person that you can't come and talk to uh, and say, well, Chewy, uh, this is not uh, right, uh, but uh, this is what you said. Let's correct it. I don't have a problem with that. Uh, but we need to. It says, don't miss uh, verse 1. And Nathan. Uh, went to David because the Lord sent him. And that is so important. When God is calling you to do something, maybe God is calling you to talk to someone, 
uh, to pray to someone, uh, something, and God is laying that on your heart, don't, uh, don't ignore it. Don't ignore it. Because um, let me tell you something, God will get your attention one way or the other. Look at the scriptures of Moses and uh, uh, Jonah. Uh, those are just a couple of stories. Uh, God will give you get your attention. It says David's story of an unjust man who lacked compassion uh, led to David to recognize the sin of his own life. All of us need a Nathan who can help uh, get us back on track and point us towards God. I, I know there's many times people have came to me and said, uh, try to point me to the right direction. Oh, I went to them and I gave them advice because they came and asked for some advice. And, you know, I prayed about it. I prayed how, uh, well, especially use my words uh, uh, correctly to honor God and do it out of love. Uh, if we're going down one path that we shouldn't, or maybe we thought of an idea and it, you know, it shouldn't be the right idea, and someone comes to you and talk about it, don't be, don't be uh, offensive. Uh, I know it's so easy. Oh, 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 oh um, be offensive and, and put that wall up. No, that's why it's so important to sit down and discuss about what's going on. Uh, you know, family times, uh, uh, friends time, and neighbor time. But you say, well, they don't, they don't listen. It's okay. At least you have done it out of love, and you try to talk to them. I mean, there's, there's everything in the, in the Bible where it talks about, you know, when someone doesn't listen, you, you take someone else uh, to come and, and try to help, and then you, you know, you bring more people. Not because you, you're trying to, you know, belittle them or anything, but trying to steer them back in the right direction, and. Uh, but it, it's so important to do it out of love, right? Uh, let me see here. Oh, it's a, all of us need a Nathan who can help us get back on the right track and point us towards God. Uh, let's see. And then here's a good question. Where are you in this story? Do you need a friend who uh, can speak the truth to you? Uh, I know there's many times I've heard people, oh, we can't, we can't go with that person because if we tell them what they're doing, uh, they get mad. They get mad. Well, you know what? As Christians, we should. We should get mad. And uh, we should be people that you can talk to. Like I said, I'll use myself as, as an example. If I'm saying something wrong out of the scripture, please talk to me. Please. Uh, you know, because I don't. It's sad to me when, when somebody's doing something, so, oh, you can't talk to them. You, you just can't because they get mad and then they won't talk to you forever. But really, as a, as a question, where are you in the story? Do you need a friend who can speak to you the truth? Or do you need to be that friend to someone else? What, uh, maybe you see someone else is going through a, a situation in life and you need to be that friend to say, uh, to sit down and talk with them. Uh, about uh, the circumstances or the trials or what they're facing. Uh, and maybe they need someone to talk to. I know there's a, a co-worker of mine, he, he, he's so funny, and I, I pulled up and he's in the garage and he's always saying, uh, he sees me, he says, Julie, what do you want? You always want something. And I'm laughing and giggling and I'm always saying, why do you think I always need something? I said, maybe I'm just, for example, it was raining. I said, maybe I just want to get out of the rain. Maybe you just need two good ears, you know, to listen to you. And he started laughing and giggling, you know. We just have a good time. And, uh, and I said, well, maybe I need a place just to stay warm uh, or something, you know, I'll just throw it out there. And, and we did. We, we just talked about what's going on at work or uh, life and just had a ball, you know, and then it was time to, because uh, I had a call. But really, what is, what is it about you? Uh, I mean, uh, maybe you're that person that just need to talk to someone else just to see how their day is going or uh, what uh, on their, what's on their mind. Or maybe you're the other person that may be, be going through something and you need someone to talk to you and maybe steer you back in the, in the direction. Uh, are you a David in need of repentance or a Nathan who needs to check in on a friend uh, today, uh, or you could say this evening, or tomorrow, or maybe this week, or next month, uh, or maybe you need to be that person to get on the phone and say, hey, how are you, to someone that you haven't talked to in a long time. 
Uh, or you can always do it old fashioned, maybe write a letter. Or you know, I know you guys probably don't remember emails, you know, you can all type a little email uh, or something. Just to know, uh, let them know that you're thinking about them uh, or a phone call. It, it just, it's amazes me. And when I read this story, uh, what in my mind becomes is love. Because Nathan did it uh, just telling a story and then telling uh, David, you know, in verse 5 when it said David's the one that got angry, you know, I'm like, whew, sometimes I, I can think of people like that, that are old, you, you can't tell them anything, and, uh, but, but you know what, uh, that shouldn't stop us from uh, maybe talking with them, uh, maybe, you know, asking about their day, because you never know, your words might be a blessing towards them, or maybe uh, your words is exactly what they need. Let's pray.